All right, so in this case here, we're removing some mini implants. So originally this patient uh, was put on my schedule for mini implants, and I don't necessarily use them all the time, but this patient had a really thin ridge and a really short ridge. So this is his ridge right here. Uh, you can see it's pretty minimal. This is a young guy too. And uh, so I placed these mini implants and um, they really didn't serve him the way that I was hoping they would. Um, really, because he has no ridge, his denture basically had nothing to grab onto except for these mini implants. And that's not really the best way to get a stable denture. These mini implants, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle trying to keep a denture in there with just these guys. So I placed them, uh, they integrated, and now I'm just removing them with the same insertion tools that I, that I placed them with, right? The, these, um, these are like the old uh, 3M mini implants. I don't think 3M makes them anymore, but you know, it's, the, the parts are by and large very compatible. Like a lot of mini implants look exactly like this. They have a little ball at the end and they have this little square hex, not square hex, they have this little square area that uh, you can engage with. So I used the insertion tool a second ago to remove it, and now I realize that I could just use this wrench much more effectively. So I'm just using this wrench to just back them out. And at first, you know, I was nervous before um, applying force to remove it because you can actually fracture these. If they're integrated, they can fracture. Um, but just kind of slowly getting them to, like, initially break off the bone, uh, then they were able to come out pretty easily. So you can see this is like a pretty routine job now, just uh, putting the tool on there and um, and backing it out. That's it. So nothing too special about it. Here in a second, I'm going to show you this reference chart. A lot of people get very confused about mini implants, uh, myself included. So there's this, this reference chart. Get ready to screenshot this in just a second. So this will show you what you need to know. So it has, on the left-hand side, it has all the numbers, you know, number two, number, you know, number uh, three. So it'll tell you an inner diameter and outer diameter. What you need to know is the inner diameter so you can order the right components. So as long as you know your inner and outer diameter, you can buy the right components to fit your mini implant uh, heads. Because a lot of times, once the mini implants are placed, you don't know what, what brand it is, right? All you know, all you see is a ball. So you need the outer diameter and inner diameter, and once you have that, you can you can order the right parts. I like to order from Preet. Uh, Preet has basically you know everything, so I like to order from those guys. Uh, as far as mini implants and you know overdenture, specialized overdenture components. I mean, for regular overdenture components, I'm still using Zest or I'm using Des Abutments, um, Des USA. There's also a company called Edison Medical. Um, that one it used to be called uh, Dental Implant Bay. Uh, I liked it a lot before. It still has the same components. It's kind of like it's kind of changed recently, but um, but yeah, some of their components are, are pretty nice uh, and, and affordable too. And they have angled um, angled locators too, which which is super convenient. So you see this one back here. It's got an ulcer. It's got an ulcer right in the floor of the mouth there. That's um, it was causing that that ulcer so i'm just going to go ahead and take this out what we're going to do for this case is i i'm able to remove these guys and even though the mandible was super thin actually as you get a little bit deeper as you go a little bit more apical that bone gets really fat so i'm removing all these guys and placing two regular sized implants anteriorly and i'm going to see if i do something really solid for this patient i'm, I'm looking to do an all on two basically so two implants, um, I'm going to place them straight up and down. Um, people used to do, you know, straight up and down implants all day, you know, before, before the whole all on four protocol came around, uh, which it has its benefits, but, um, but there's nothing wrong with, you know, with axially, axially placed implants. So I'm going to place uh, two conventionally sized implants and I'm going to do a, a fixed restoration for this patient on something thick on, um, on just two implants. So I'll show you what that looks like once, once the implants osseointegrate, but for now I'm just removing these guys. So I just wanted to show you how I remove these mini implants. You can see it's not uh, rocket science. Uh, if, you, if you were able to place them, you're gonna be able to remove them just with the same, the same tools. Hope that helps.